In the last presentation, we completed 3-bit asynchronous subcounter. Now I want a 4-bit asynchronous subcounter. So let's see what changes we have to make to get a 4-bit asynchronous subcounter. Again, the flip-flops are asynchronized. The clock is not given simultaneously to all these four flip-flops. You can see QA, the output of the A flip-flop, is given as the clock to the B flip-flop. Similarly, QB is given as the clock to C flip-flop. And finally, QC, the output of the C flip-flop is acting as the clock for the D flip-flop. So they are asynchronous counter and definitely they are up counter because we are considering QA, QB, QC and QD as the output. Therefore they are up counters. You will see in down counters we consider QA complement, QB complement, QC complement and QD complement. Then it will count in the reverse manner and we call it the down counters. We will discuss it later. But now you have to see one more change is the type of of the flip-flop used. I have used T flip-flops in this case whereas in the last presentation I used JK flip-flop. There is no problem using T flip-flop because we just require toggling and T stands for toggling so why to use JK we can directly use T flip-flop and we can give the logic 1 to all the inputs TA, TB, TC and TD. You can see they are connected to a logic 1 and in that case we have toggling. So this is one change and definitely the number of flip-flop is changed instead of having three flip-flops I have four flip-flops because I have to make a four bit asynchronous subcounter. This bit is the output of the flip-flop so if I want to increase the bit to four I have to use the four flip-flop instead of three. So these are the basic things that I want to tell you in at the beginning of this presentation and uh, you know how to analyze this how to get the output waveform and we will do it quickly then we will see the truth table for the four bit asynchronous subcounter. Before that, let me tell you one more thing. I have already told you how to get the state of the counter. It is 2 to the power n, where n is nothing but the number of flip-flops used. So I have 4 flip-flops, so 2 to the power 4 is equal to 16. So we have 16 states. This is states so we have 16 states in case of 4 bit up counter and we can also find out the maximum count and the maximum count is given as 2 to the power n minus 1 that is 16 minus 1 which equals to 15 so it can count maximum 15 and 15 is nothing but 1 1 1 1 so this is the output of the flip-flops and uh, this is the maximum count. And the minimum count is definitely 0, 0, 0 and 0. So we have to count from 0 to 15. So this is our task. Let's see how the waveform looks for this arrangement. I have made the clock and uh, the clock is the external clock that we are giving to the A flip-flop and as the logic 1 is given to TA definitely we have toggling and uh, we have to find out QA so let's find out QA first initially QA is 0 and it will remain 0 for the first falling edge you can also see the flip-flops are negative as triggered so we have to consider the falling edges for the change and we have toggling so QA will be complemented and it will uh, remain high for the next falling edge in the same way it will be complemented and again remain low for the next falling edge and then again the complement of 0 is 1 and again 0 in the same way we have to complete till the 16 clock pulses. I will not complete for the 16 clock pulses because I know you can do it. I will just do it for let's say 9 clock pulses. Okay and uh, this QA is now given as the clock to the B flip flop and uh, we are interested in calculating QB now. So I have QA as my clock and I will consider all the falling edges and QB is my output. Again TA is equal to 1 so we have toggling. It is low initially and it will remain low for the first falling edge. Again it will go high and remain high for the next falling edge and the toggling will take place. The toggling is very important concept you can see the whole counter is dependent on it. 
that's why I took two or three presentations to explain you what is toggling so this is my QB now we can have QC and uh, for QC this QB is acting as the clock and we will consider the falling edges these are the falling edges initially it is low and it will remain low till the first falling edge and again it will go high for the next falling edge then it will go low now the interesting part comes and actually the change come if you compare it with the last presentation we have the another flip-flop so another output D and now QC is the clock so we have to consider the falling edge this is the falling edge and for this falling edge we will get the toggling and the toggling will make 0 1 so this is how the timing diagram of a 4-bit asynchronous subcounter looks now we can have our truth table and uh, we will complete it very quickly because there is nothing new in the truth table we have the clock and we have the outputs and before writing the outputs let me tell you QA is my LSB the least significant bit and QD is my MSB the most significant bit so I have QD, QC, QB and then QA as the output bits and uh, you can also write the decimal equivalent in the next column we will find out these bits before the first falling edge arrives and I will call that duration initial duration and uh, we will uh, see from this timing diagram what are the values of QA, QB, QC and QD this is my first falling edge and before that you can see QA is 0, QB is also 0, QC is 0 and QD is uh, 0 so all the 4 bits are 0 so I will write 0, 0, 0 and uh, 0 and this is definitely 0 in decimal the first falling edge and then the second falling edge then we will directly see the ninth falling edge and the falling edge between the two and nine you can definitely find by yourself so we will check for first second and ninth let's see for the first what we got QA is 1 QB is 0 QC is 0 and QD is 0 we will see for the falling edge number 2 QA is 0 QB is 1 QC is 0 and QD is 0 also and we will see for the ninth falling edge in this case QA is 1 QB is 0 QC is 0 and QD is 1 so you have to remember these things 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 and 1 0 0 1 these are the values of my output bits for the first second and ninth falling edges so let me write it down for first I was having 0 0 0 1 for second 0 0 1 0 and for ninth 1 0 0 1 let's try to find out the equivalent values in decimal number this is 1 this is 2 and this is 9 in the same way if we calculate for the 14th falling edge and the 15th falling edge let's see what we got for the 14th falling edge we will have 1 1 1 and 0 and for the 15th falling edge we will have all the bits high so this is the equivalent of 14 8 plus 4 plus 2 this is definitely 14 and this is 15 so you can see we are counting from 0 to 15 that I have already told you 15 is the maximum count and in total we are having 16 states so this is all you need to know about a 4 bit asynchronous up counter this is a up count starting from 0 and ending at 15 we are having the higher values with increasing clock pulses so this is all for this presentation in the next presentation we will see the state diagram of the clock and then we can move to the down counters so see you in the next presentation